Hello? Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Hi. Hello. Um, yeah, thanks for uh, coming to my talk. Um, uh, my name is uh, Yoshinari Ishiki. Um, I'm normally based in the Netherlands. Um, um, well, I came here um, at this conference uh, without knowing the other conference happening <laughs> in the Netherlands, uh, Hackers Conference happening in the Netherlands, but that's funny. But um, anyway, um, I'm going to present my, um, my project, um, which um, we started like during the, um, right in the middle of the pandemic. Um, so, um, so I, I normally work with the researchers um, from technical universities, um, mainly in the field of supply chain lo and logistics, and um, as an artist and researcher. Um, so um, I'm going to start my uh, presentation. Um, so um, the, um, how it started, basically, so sort of, um, a friend of mine uh, who worked for uh, this small municipality in Japan, uh, I'm originally from Japan, by the way, um, um, called Minami Sandiku, um, made contact with me. So um, this place is um, basically like known as a um, disaster area uh, from the 2011 tsunami. So it's been like um, more than a decade uh, since the um, incident. However, um, the um, yeah, was still there, um, suffering from some um, financial issues and stuff like that. And uh, he basically. Um, run this um, new project uh, called the Chef in Residence, Minami Sandiku, so where he invited um, some um, more or less like more experimental uh, chefs from um, abroad. And so that kind of they stayed in this region trying to come up with um, um, the new recipes uh, by fusing their expertise and local cuisine. And um, so um, there are, the first edition was successful and uh, there, Planning the second one with chefs from Taiwan, um, but suddenly, um, you know, this got cancelled, and like everything else um, during the pandemic. Um, so he made contact with me, basically asking me, so what should we do with the budget? So um, I actually um, was in this place um, in 2019 summer before the pandemic started, and uh, this was um, in this one of the coffee places in the middle of the mountain, and um, I was kind of expected to see um, some, some sort of physical traces from the disaster. Um, but for some reason, I really couldn't see much of it, much of it, like, um, so the, in terms of like, you know, uh, the, um, you know, infrastructure and stuff like that, so it's, everything has been, has been already fixed really well. Um, so, but, um, but what I could what I could see was more more or less I would say like a financial like traces. Um, what I mean is that um, you know you, see, you go to just like a local community center or like a library and those places and those buildings are made just kind of too well for this kind of uh, with the, sort of for this for place with this kind of population. So they have like about ten thousand people there and then. They have this like a this library building that's made with this huge wood and some really large glasses and this kind of stuff. And it's just kind of you can kind of see the cost of it like without even just you know thinking much about it. And then sort of this like sort of the financial traces. I mean, they kind of this kind of reflects the magnitude of the disaster in this region. So basically, the sort of the amount of uh, the number of lives uh, lost in this region sort of is. Um, reflected in this kind of way. So basically, you know, financially, sort of uh, trying to compensate for the lives that they um, lost. So if you observe this region from above, um, it's, uh, it's C-shaped, um, roughly. And it's, this uh, municipality is located in the um, e northeast of Japan and facing the Pacific Ocean towards the east. And uh, um, what's special about this region is that the, um, the, they have like, all the um, water catchment areas within the municipality uh, itself. So it means that sort of when um, water circulates from the forest um, to the sea and it goes back to the uh, forest again. So basically sort of they can sort of manage the entire ecosystem um, within their own region sort of. Um, so, um, and also like the other thing that's, and that I learned um, 
um, is that the, the because of the what when when tsunami hits, basically sort of it um, it comes and then sort of a, it go come, a goes back into the sort of ocean again. So that sort of the um, it only not not only that it carries like all the stuff from this place uh, from from the town and stuff, but also all the pollution in the um, um, ocean itself. So that actually the the ocean got much much cleaner. That uh, the yield rate or or for the, uh, the aqu aquaculture got much more improved and stuff like that. So it's some interesting stuff that I learned about. So around this time, like I started to hear some um, um, some term like zoom fatigue and uh, some some you know like people uh, some demand for uh, like a new kind of virtual physical space. So um, so and then. Uh, one of the attempts that's like done was the um, this London Marathon that was held virtually, um, which I participated in uh, personally myself as well. And uh, so um, basically, what they did was to um, they made this app, and sort of you um, you have to pay for it, but you get registered and you download the app, and sort of they, on this day uh, of the marathon, you basically have to um, sort of um, well, either sort of run or walk um, the 26.2 miles within uh, 20 24 hours. So um, the the reason why I um, participated is that you can basically sort of take as much rest as you want um, in the course of the the, the marathon. So um, sort of because it's the, the my finishing time is like nine hours and five minutes. So um, I would be I would no normally like in a normal marathon I wouldn't uh, participate because I would be too ashamed to be walking in front of people all the times. Um, so um, basically, yeah. Um, um, so what it was uh, technically was the um, um, audio-based augmented reality experience. So uh, what it means is that um, um, so basically, sort of every mile you make, you get like announcements through the um, the app um, that says, oh. oh uh, you just made a, a one mile or whatever that, you know, and then just they basically tell you uh, where you w where you will be sort of running in London um, the if you were physically there. Um, so of course, like you're running in your own town. So in my case, I was running in Rotterdam, and uh, you know, sort of you kind of you, as you see the sort of scenes uh, from the your own town, then you kind of hear this um, overlay, a sound overlay of. You know the sort of the other city, so it's kind of a um, overlapped, overlap there. Um, this reminds me of uh, this uh, science science fiction novel um, by uh, China Mirville, um, who's uh, the um, um, he's he's a British person. Um, um, so basically, this novel called the City and City, um, where uh, two city states. Um, Coexist at the same time or in the same uh, geographical area. Um, so this basically where, where this where the novel is based in, um, and so you know these protagonists like they're sitting on the same bench in in this sort of geographically same area, but they belong to uh, different states. So um, city states is like more like Singapore or like Hong Kong and those places. So it's a city and the state at the same time. And so like, you know, they, so, and how they do that is that they sort of by basically education. So um, you all, you know, when you're growing up, you're told kind of what to see and what not to see um, from the, um, you know, so basically you can only see some stuff from um, your own region and not from the other country. And so um, that's how they sort of divide. So like, if you look at the um, on the map, like where I was located and where I got approached, so um, I, I was approached by Minami Sanuku, this like the small municipality in Japan, and then I was where I was uh, was in Rotterdam, and uh, the closest uh, coastal uh, city is called The Hague. Um, and sort of basically, we came up with this idea of um, somehow cutting off this. It's in between area, or which includes the entire American continent, and to 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 mush it together so that um, you can kind of form um, a region, a new kind of uh, a virtual region where your um, where two uh, municipalities are separated through, uh, by the common channel. 
So like remarkably, um, they each at the municipality um, happen to have nearly um, exactly the same land area. So Minami Sanke had this, you know, 160. 3.4 uh, square kilometers, and then the, the Hague. Um, well, I had to actually sort of adjust a little bit to kind of make it really um, nearly the same. Um, but yeah, so basically, um, then this you can make a sort of into um, what you call um, what we call the Minami Sanku Hague Special Art Experiment Zone. So like, uh, we basically kind of built it on top of the um, special economic zone. So it's kind of a mock of this um, um, uh, SA, SA, SEZ. Um, so around this time, I also like learned um, quite a strange um, concept um, from this friend of mine. Um, it's called an online lodging. So, um, so you can just first read it, um, what it, um, what the experience was like. Um, a virtual stay, online trip is definitely worth experiences. This person called Kurikurikun and stayed um, in 2020, um, 23rd of May. Um, all things I loved about staying at Fujiyama B and B. Masa, the friendly host, the conversations with others in the common living space, the local Kyoto info, you can now experience all from your home, anywhere in the world, with a sense of adventure, but not that much hope that it would be the, that enjoyable. I enjoyed one of the Fujiyama B&B's virtual stays, but it turned out to be a lot of fun. Online means it's actually easy to strike up a conversation with others, and with screen sharing, you can share photos and your online presence really easy, enabling common connections to be made quickly. Can't wait to actually stay there again, but I'm hoping that Masa continues with the virtual stays, a great way to experience Kyoto in your living room. Um, so um, this person, Kurikurikum, he even like, um, rates uh, value and rooms and service, everything, and basically five stars. So, um, so um, what, what they did actually, um, was that the uh, um, um, Zoom conference that sort of simulated um, the um, common living space of a, like a hostel. Uh, so you imagine like if you're in a, staying in a hostel and in Kyoto and you may be, um, well in the evening or so, um, maybe sitting in this like a common living space or something, then you might get to talk to um, some of the, your fellow travelers and sort of, you know, basically you know, like where did you go, and oh, how was that, and stuff like that. You you have this kind of conversations, and so basically, sort of, they simulated this conversational part only online um, to kind of simulate this experience. Um, so they also, I heard that they also showed your bed and stuff like that through this camera uh, webcam. Um, but you know, like it's just like, well, okay, so this is the bed I would where I would we sleep in. But you know, that's a, that's about it. But. So if you think about the, um, what the essence of travel, um, um, this person, um, this photographer person called it Michio Hoshino, um, he, he was based in Alaska for a very long time. He studied in Alaska. And he um, also, he's a, he wrote a lot of many essays as well. And in his, one of his, his essays, he says that um, in order for a person to travel and make the landscape of a new land their own, they need to have someone else intervene no matter how many countries we visit or many how many times we circumnavigate the globe, we'll never be able to feel the vastness of the world on its own. However, when we meet someone and fall in love with that person, the landscape becomes broader and deeper for the first time. So, um, well, what he, what, he, what he means is that, well, in my interpretation, um, so basically sort of when you visit somewhere, um, you need to know somebody uh, from this place. So that like you um, see this uh, city that you visit for the first time through this person, through the as a sort of lens, and so you kind of never become a tourist really. So um, that's basically how I understand. And he also says that um, something interesting about like uh, going to a barber shop. So and this is my own theory, but if you want to smell the local people when you are traveling, go to a barber shop. I can't really explain why, but when I sit in a barber's chair with the townspeople getting my hair cut and shaved, I somehow feel, feel like I'm a local. Um, uh, re uh, the renowned travel writer um, person called Pico Aya 
who spends uh, most of his time between Japan and the US. Um, he says something about um, Kyoto as well. Um, so basically, um, he says that the, um, the other thing I'd recommend is just to go to a McDonald's outlet, even in Kyoto. You find moon viewing burgers on the menu in September in the honor of the traditional harvest moon. You will encounter chicken tatsuta burgers and bacon potato pies and iced tea made of Earl Grey. And among customers who are usually elegantly dressed and beautifully mannered, you see that even McDonald's becomes somewhere as, as Japanese as a traditional inn. So all these things um, points towards uh, two things. Um, to really travel somewhere, um, you need to know um, somebody from the place, and also like some like going, going to ha having a haircut and those like bodily bodily acts would help experience enhancing this experience. Um, so we did this open call um, uh, for some creators and artists to make. Uh, um, online lodging experiences. Um, so this project was funded by the um, the Embassy of the Netherlands. Um, so like this is like your, the cards that I made. Um, I was the coordinator. Um, I called my, myself coordinator and uh, approaching people um, basically with this card. And so with this logo um, from the, the embassy, I look like a, some sort of a diplomat person from this newly set up territory. So that was like, that was also kind of one of my aims to make it look, make myself look a bit more official. Um, so um, I, uh, well, I looked, uh, went to many graduation shows um, in the within the Netherlands, and I met two uh, interesting young artists. Um, one of them was Aide Derricks. Um, she's originally from Aruba, uh, which is uh, a part of the uh, Kingdom of the Netherlands. Uh, it's actually located in. South America, uh, next to Venezuela, um, it's a very small country. Um, but so what she made was this, um, um, you know, like those the, the uh, photo stand-ins, uh, which you find um, in uh, in a sort of tourist spot. So basically, um, there's a photo, so some, normally like a photograph or some illustration, then there's a like um, um, hole. Um, cut out um, and then you can sort of fit your face into that and get get a photograph taken. So um, what she was doing was that kind of an inverted version of that. So basically there's a, like a green screen and then with a hole in it and then you put your face in and then you get a photograph uh, taken. Then you actually then walk to this uh, space next to it. Then, um, then you find this like artificial beach and then sort of you look around, oh okay, I arrived at this Beach, um, and you just uh, find that find that find out that actually um, your face is embedded right in the middle of the sun. So it's like a um, in a tourist um, place. Normally, okay, you are expecting to see um, something more exotic and you know foreign um, uh, for yourself, but you actually find uh, the most one of the most familiar things um, that is uh, your face, your own face. So the other artist I um, found very interesting is the, um, this person called Peter Fekli. Um He um, he lived by the side uh, on the coast of the uh, the Hague, um, this uh, coastal city in the Netherlands. And he um, since he lived there, so he was actually uh, he accumulating a lot of video footages um, on the coast. And he basically sort of made sort of video collage. Um, so what it mainly did was kind of matching um, the speed of the clouds and the speed of the waves and so this well the, in terms of the medium itself so it's I would say quite traditional sort of the um, the you know, basically video and the projection base. But however, the, somehow this combination of this, the speeds um, of the clouds and waves to, uh, matched together made some sort of a quite a surreal experience. Oh, sorry. So um, how we approach this um, 
this um, residence um, program. So um, I thought like he, it would be good to actually to um, write on top of like uh, what he already created. So uh, for his graduation show, so he, well, we suggested to make take some footage from this region uh, called Minami Saniku. So um, we found uh, this person who um, had some filming experience uh, on the phone. And uh, well, we did this virtual um, film direction. So um, um, we took advantage of the high um, um, iPhone penet penetration rate in Japan. So everyone has an iPhone uh, in Japan, even if they're based in a very remote village or something like that. So we, um, in when we filmed in last year, um, was it last year or the year before? Um, um, there was like the, the newest device was iPhone 12 mini, and uh, we well he had that as well, and uh, the iPhone 12 mini, and uh, and so what we did was basically sort of uh, we already uh, we asked the artists to look through the um, area on Google Street View, and trying to find some interesting spots. So basically, so on this day of the uh, filming, we um, drove to this actual place and sort of uh, we. Up, put the zoom up and sort of we did this like um, a bit of showing and so we decided the sort of angle and everything and you know did the final filming and checking. So this is one of the pictures um, that's uh, produced like it's a, a place called uh, Cape Kamiwarisaki. Um, this is uh, the other footage that's being produced. Um, the it's called the Arashima Island, so it's like a very small island that you can, uh, which you can walk to from the main um, island. We also did this uh, virtual sketch, what we call, and um, so um, there's the quite a famous uh, pasture, pasture pig farm in this region. So we um, asked the same person to take a photograph of some of the pigs and sort of the the others, Alice Ai Day. Um, she she paints stuff, so you know she actually sort of uh, made some paintings um, based on those pics. Um, she also went to um, the one of the most uh, famous tourist spots in the, the Netherlands called Zanseschans, um, and then he she did she put this uh, 360 videos um, she, uh, films. Um, so um, so this this was like my idea, but. Um, um, I wanted to um, suddenly this thing um, um, called the COVID-19 antigen test kit was um, introduced into our lives. Um, this you know box that you can kind of order online and then it comes with cotton swabs and you know QR codes and, and those things just you know suddenly got introduced to our lives. And um, so we basically sort of uh, what I wanted to do is to somehow. Um, so, you know, if there's a lot of, like kind of hole uh, in our reality that's been made, then why not like trying to sort of um, play with it rather? So I did also the idea of uh, the connecting somehow to this uh, Google, this to a uh, Google Cardboard, uh, which is which was discontinued in March uh, last year, and so. Um, well, discontinued meaning, meaning means that there's a lot more um, the um, designs available. Um, so, like a kind of a, you know, like a try, I'm basically trying to find um, um, the sort of design that actually fits nearly, that's nearly identical to uh, a um, travel, uh, test kit, basically. So, um, this is the um, resulting um, package. Um, that's uh, placed right next to this, um, the COVID-19 engine test kit. Um, what it is, is actually was the, uh, the so it was like actually Google Cardboard basically. So, you know, basically it nearly looks identical and then you buy this thing instead of a, well, normally like in the COVID travel protocol, you buy this travel kit and you get this thing delivered to your house and you get tested and you have to have the negative result, then you go on to the trouble. But in our uh, package, um, you buy this thing and it gets posted to you. And then you open it and you assemble the headset and you go directly into the trouble. So that's how you basically, you know, um, skip this like the process. So this is the, um, the demo of um, the uh, one of the apps.
yeah, you start from the sauna because there's a quite a big um, sauna boom in Japan right now. So just like you, you only want to do right on top of that. So it's like a sort of the um, it's basically um, the some of the uh, image uh, images from the Netherlands and the Japan combined in um, in in the in one scene. So that's basically um, what it was. And you can navigate through these uh, buttons. Normally, there's this main, main mainland you can see from this view, but you see this actually the Netherlands from um, this island. So that's. It's like a two statues combined in one scene. So if one, the one on the right is a statue from Japan, and the other one um, is actually the, some statue from the Netherlands. Um, so combining. Then you hit this um, last spot, um, which is the uh, the Cape Kamiuraseki, so where we did this virtual film direction. So what you see actually is the, the it's not the actual um, the sun from Japan, but actually the, the sunrise um, from the Netherlands that appeared in, in between this cape. So um, this is the other app uh, that we made. Um, so um, we, um, we we wanted to uh, also like um, make made an extension of the the, uh, the artist's work that um, that's produced for the graduation show. So um, um, so we basically sort of virtualize the um, photo standing experience, and we print to this three three hundred sixty 
degrees video. So if you first open the app, and then you um, fit your face in, um, like you do it with no, with normally with the um, um, photo stand in, but it's like a green screen. Um, that's exactly what the artist did for the uh, graduation show. And then going to the scene, um, this is a uh, uh, the one of the most famous tourist spots in the Netherlands. And then you see this, uh, the pigs walking around. And if you look closely and you find your face um, embedded right in, middle, in the middle of the, uh, of the pig. <laughs> Um, so the um, so this is how well, how I designed the headset. So I was uh, um, already found this existing the uh, pattern, um, and this was like from a Canadian university, I think. Um, so basically, sort of, uh, it took me more um, time to find the light supplier and the right design uh, for this um, experience um, than actually sort of designing. Um, So this is a team that um, we uh, worked with. So um, we are like uh, spread it like all over the world. So um, two developers were uh, in Athens in Greece, and the um, and the other uh, Greek guy was based in Sweden, um, and and a friend of mine who's doing PhD in Japan. Uh, he's a Dutch guy. Um, he was in Japan, so we worked together like this. Um, so yeah, and this is the uh, basically the, all the people that supported um, my project, and um, uh, there's there are all the funders, um, the embassy and the municipality, and then some um, the uh, called the, uh, yeah the funder called the EU Japan Fest. Um, um, yeah, thanks thanks very much uh, for for the for the talk. If you have any questions, come over here to this microphone to ask them, please. I actually have the package here, actually. Is the software available on Android? Um, but it, it, can, can you say again? Uh, are the apps available on Android? Uh, yeah, both iOS and Android. That's they're, are they they're in the Play Store? Or yeah. Yeah. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so yeah, so, um, can you maybe put the light up, maybe? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, so this is the actual um, the uh, the turbo package. So, um, well, hopefully, it looks identical to the um, COVID nineteen antigen test kit. So, um, where in fact it's a um, foldable headset, and you assemble. Um, like this. And then it becomes a headset. Then um, you basically uh, there's a QR code here, uh, which you can scan. And then so sort of you basically um, yeah you then oops, sorry put your phone into it and then um, yeah start dropping. <laughs> Is there any other questions?
Thanks. Uh, thanks for the talk. Uh, would you consider extending this project to any other pair of cities? I know that this pair was particularly, you know, important for your situation, but I could see this being really cool for other places too. Yeah, like uh, actually, I got like asked by many people like if you if I'm interested to actually make into a, like a more um, um, it's like, like a kind of series, make it into a series, series or something. But I, for me personally, I'm not super interested to actually sort of, you know, like a, it, it just happened to be in this way for me, like, you know, like a sort of, um, and that's why like I, how it's interesting sort of, you know, because it's like based on um, contingency and stuff. Um, yeah, if I once started to make it into a series, then what's, um, I don't find this medium interesting anymore. I don't find, I don't know, just like the older app development process, I, I, everything. Um, I just, I, 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 I would lose my interest in working on that, so I guess. Thanks. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> yeah, thanks. <laughs>